But only the bold and the brave and the masculine went upstairs and only sissies went inside. So you'd never be caught inside if you were to maintain your, uh, your self-image at all. Because they had a short wheelbase and a long overhang, they had a pitching motion fore and aft. They tended to sway a bit from side to side as well, and you could hear the structure creaking as this happened. This didn't stop the drivers making a pretty good pace, especially downhill. <laughs> so there was a technique for holding on and maintaining comfort, and adults would do this and read the paper at the same time, which was quite clever. <laughs> for a, uh, a young child, it was quite a, a daunting experience travelling on the top of a double-deck tram. I remember. I remember being quite frightened by the experience. Of... Sitting right in the very front seat of the open double-decker trams and having, thinking that was just a joy of life. They used to come up and down like that. It was only like, it was only two, four wheels. Good manners were expected on all trams. The conductor of the tram was packed on a wet, cold day, asking all the men to come out and go upstairs to leave the ladies inside to keep warm. Men were expected to stand if a woman came in and didn't have a seat. And they took a very poor view of her if she didn't say thank you. There were often not enough straps for the people that had to stand. And it was quite embarrassing to find yourself cannoned onto the nearest man, you know. Children were also expected to stand. They were taken out of their seats and made to stand. It's all right if they were with their mothers, of course, they could hang on to mum. But uh, if they had to stand by themselves and they couldn't reach the straps, it was very, very uncomfortable for them. They were just thrown from side to side, you know. Company officials were at a loss to know why one particular Sunday service was popular with trammies rostered on double-deckers until they discovered those trams afforded a good view of a nudist club's meeting on a city roof. Three weeks after the opening of the Lena Valley service, the Proctor's Road route was opened. A short spur line was opened in Federal Street, North Hobart in 1924 to cater for the football crowds. On March the 2nd, 1923, the Newtown line was officially extended out to Glenorchy. Three years before, the first of the city's 44 bogey single-deck trams had appeared. Some components from the first bogey tram, the 1903 English-built double-decker, were used to construct the single-decker number 42.